abs are not made in the kitchen. Abs are revealed in the kitchen. Abs are made in the gym. <laughs> right? How many trainers do you feel like have this on their mirror and they look at it every morning just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. That's right. I yeah. mean, it was a it was a popular thing to tell tell people. I, mean, I understand why, why it came. Yeah. Came no, I mean, it's, it's because you could do – you know, all the ab crunches in the world. And if you don't get to a certain body fat percentage, you'll, see you'll never see them. And understand that you have abs. Everybody listening to the show right now, even if you've never done a single crunch in your entire life, you have abs, just like you have biceps, triceps, shoulders, back. I mean, you, you have those muscles and the best and fastest way to reveal them is to reduce body fat and expose them. That it doesn't mean, and I think this is where the extreme of this has gone, where saying abs are made in the kitchen that people just t completely now disregard no. the value and the benefits of actually strength training and building your abdominals. Yeah. And also I do want to say that. So yes, very true. Y you have to get lean enough to see them. Otherwise it doesn't matter. Right. But I will say this, uh, a develop, a well-developed muscle is more visible at higher body fat percentages. So a muscular arm is going to look leaner at the same body fat, uh, percentage as a non-muscular arm would look. Hey, real quick, here's today's giveaway, the MAPS Prime oh. Bundle. This is the correctional exercise bundle. We're going to give it away for free to one of you viewers. Oh. Here's what you got to do if you want to win. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you, and you'll get free access to the MAPS Prime Bundle. Also, we are in the final hours of our MAPS Power Bundle sale. This is a bundle that includes MAPS Strong and MAPS Power Lift. Each one is a three-month workout program. So if you get the bundle, it's six months of exercise programming. This normally would retail at $300, but the sale brought it down to $79.99. Again, the MAPS Power Bundle, final hours when we drop this episode here on YouTube. So if you want to take advantage, go to mapsmarch.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right, here's the deal. There's no secret to forever fitness success, but there is a single answer, and that's this. Fall in love with the journey. That's it. That's the one. That's not a big aha. I love that's it. a big moment. Powerful. No, <laughs> you know what? A big aha. No, let's get into it a little deeper because yeah. uh, this really is the secret, okay? Now, obviously, there's lots of components that make up what a good, successful long-term routine look like and diet, but yeah. at, the, at its root, at its core, if you talk to anybody who's been doing this for a long, long period of time, because that's where you really want to get your answers. People who've done this for 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, right, who've been working out for a long time, it's they stop caring about the goal. It's mm -hmm. really not about goals anymore. It's not about, I want to bench this much. I want to lift that much. I want to get that lean. It's all about, I just love the process. When you fall in love with the goal, eventually you hit that goal and you're screwed. And, every, and we've all experienced this, right? When you're, you're, you obsess over a goal, I can do it. I'm going to hit this particular goal. Then you get there and you're like, now what? Versus I love the process. I love the journey. And then the side effect of that is all the goal, all the goals you could ever dream of, all the success you'd ever dream of. It just happens because you love the journey so much. You don't stop working out when you love working out. You don't stop eating healthy when you love eating healthy. But if you work out to look a particular way, if you eat to look a particular way, and you eventually hit those goals, it, it's going to be a big challenge to stay consistent. Now, I mean, I think that's the recipe for any successful totally. Uh, pursuit, uh, work, school driven relationships, anything in, in that direction is just to really focus on, um, you know, the day to day process and really learn to enjoy uh, those things, even if when they are challenging, uh, because on the other side of that, you get you reap all the benefits anyways, totally. as a result. So why be miserable uh, on your way through? Now, totally. How do you communicate this to somebody who openly tells you, I don't like this yeah. process. I hate doing this. I work out because I sure. know I need to, because I know it makes me healthier. Mm -hmm. um, but every bit of it, I do it begrudgingly. Like, you know, it's, it's almost never the, now, of course, we, we, let's be clear. You could do things wrong. You could do things that hurt yourself, all that stuff. So if we're controlling for that, it's almost never the thing that you're doing. It's the mindset of the person that's doing it. It's almost always that, right? It's almost always, well, why do you hate it so much? Oh, you know, it's, it's hard. I got to wake up early and, you know, I'd rather be doing this or that, or, um, uh, you know, I just want to lose 30 pounds, but maybe not that bad, or I hate my body. And so now this exercise is kind of a punishment. It's usually the person's mindset that's causing those issues. 
And, and so rather than look, because here's what ends up happening, Adam, and I know you guys have seen this, right? The person searches for the different method. Well, I hate this kind of extra. Oh, I'm going to do this one. I'm, I hate this diet. I'm going to try this one. I'm going to try that diet. And it's just because their mindset remains the same, yeah. no matter what they do, they're going to hate it versus working on the mindset. Okay, I'm doing this because I'm taking care of my, Who doesn't like to take care of themselves, right? I'm doing this because I love myself. I'm taking care of myself. I'm going to modify my workouts to improve my quality of life right now. So if I'm tired, it's going to be more of a relaxing workout. It's going to be stress relieving. Oh, I'm jazzed. It's going to, I'm going to go after it, right? I'm, I'm enjoying the process. And if you figure out how to enjoy that process, which takes time, then everything else takes care of itself. But it's the mindset of the person going into it. I remember a while ago, we had a, uh, somebody ask a question that said, um, something like a, 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 the secret to long-term financial success is you know, doing what you love or finding you know, something that you love. And I remember, Adam, your reply was, no, learn to love what you're doing. Yeah. That's the that that's the real answer. Secret sauce. Right, right. You remember saying that? Yeah, yeah. I think also part of the the problem too is people's idea of of how they need to go about it, right? So I think that has a lot to do with why they hate the process is because I think the the process to them is is way worse than what it needs to be, right? Mm. Like I think this idea of like you got to cut way back on these things. You can't have the foods that you love to do. It has like to the, be miserable. You got to cr- yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I I think that's a, a big part of the problem too. So in my experience, when people say that they hate coming to the gym, they hate that process. It's because of the relationship that they they have with exercise, and totally. it's been taught to them the wrong way. And so I think if you can explain to them, listen, we don't. In fact, we want to do a lot less than what you're doing right now. We just want to do a little bit and create some good habits around and then build mm-hmm. upon it. I think when they when they start to piece that together, that it doesn't have to be this like all or nothing mentality. I think that they 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 start to change their totally their relationship. Totally. You also it. start to ch- you also through that process, you start to develop a different relationship with struggle and with pain. Mm-hmm. Like this is a big one. Like I I, rem- I remember as an early trainer. It was always weird to me training someone who'd never exercised before, how they would react to the burn that they would feel. And, and I would, I mean, I was training them appropriately. So it wasn't like I was hammering anybody, but I remember one specific instance where this, this woman was doing tricep press, never exercised before. She was doing rope press downs and I had no weight on the stack at all. Very light, just wanted her to kind of feel the range of motion. She did it and then she let go of the rope and it slammed. Ah, and I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, I, I, I think I'm hurting myself. I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, I was, it was I'm like, you mean it burns? Yeah. Like she had a, a, a completely different relationship yeah. to pain because, you know, she had no practice with it. You know, like when I work out and I've been working out forever, I feel probably the same pain or more pain than somebody who's never exercised because I've been training so long. I push myself, but it, the, it doesn't, it's not the same relationship. It doesn't feel bad to me. I actually start to enjoy that whole process of it. Right. So it's definitely a practice. That should be the goal, though. The goal should be to learn. That's why I tell people when you go to the gym, practice your exercises, learn the skill. You know, you should feel better when you leave than you did going in, not what people t- tend to do, which they feel shitty afterwards because they beat the crap out of themselves. Well, it's interesting. It's uh, part of that, not having that mindset, I think, is why we see so many different modalities and so many different diets. Totally. It's because we want to just distract ourselves with something else. Yes. It must be this that was the problem. Yeah. You know, it's always a, a deflection of other things that, um, is the reason why I'm not enjoying this and I'm not getting the results I want. It's got to be this method. Dude, it's no no joke. Just maybe think of something. It's like the dude that's like, he just, he's dated like 10 people. He's like, I don't know, man. I just, you know, yeah. just, girls are crazy. They're all crazy. <laughs> yeah, she smelled. And you're yeah, like, I had to get rid well, of there's one common denominator here, my friend. Like <laughs> 10 crazy chicks. Yeah. Yeah. Might be you. Yeah, you might dude. be the problem. So if you've tried like 50 million times to different types of workouts and all these different diets and, Ah, uh, they all whatever. The common denominator is you. It might not be the program or the diet. It might be you. You're you might have the wrong mentality, and you might be dreading the journey, or purposely not realizing it. Maybe subconsciously dreading the journey so much that you, nothing is going to work for you. Of course, yeah, we're totally calling you out right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of crazy, uh, what do y'all think about that uh, Will Smith smack? Oh, <laughs> wow. dude! All right, I've I, been holding it in all I know, morning. I really want to hear you guys' this. theory because uh, immediately my first reaction is like, "Oh, dude, he is a Oscar-winning actor." Yeah. Right, and he is in a lot of action movies. And it looked very action slapping. Like his technique was just very. 
whoosh, and, yeah. and it's like Chris Rock's face looked like he was ready for it, and then sort of turn. I don't know, dude. So I, I smell a fish. I've gone back and forth. It smells yeah. fishy. So before we get into that, because this is a great conversation, oh, yeah. I, I, I have two thoughts that are that I'd like to focus on for just for a second. One is okay. Let's just assume it was real. Okay. Um, okay. First off, obviously the right thing to do when someone uses words that hurt your feelings or insult someone is to, to not, slap them. No, it's to not oh. physically assault, assault oh. them. Obviously. Now, as a man and as a human, how would I react if somebody said something that really hit my wife really hard? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know how I would react. If it was on the streets, I might react physically. I, I, to be quite honest, if it's at a show, I might just leave. So put that aside though. Here's the thing nobody's focusing on. Okay. Here's the thing. If anybody, let's imagine there's, there's, cause there's people in that audience that aren't celebrities. There's like makeup artists and stunt doubles and whatever. Imagine if a random average person, non Will Smith walked up on stage, slapped the shit out of Chris Rock. What would have happened immediately? Out yeah. security on his ass arrested. This is a see any of that. this is a perfect example of the rules that apply that they apply to the average person do not apply to these fucking celebrities. So I don't, I don't agree with that. I 100% agree I don't with agree that. with that because first of all this is not a a a public open this is a very private award ceremony yeah. with many most people You don't that, think there's security there? Bro, okay, the, the, your example would be like this. If we were at a family barbecue with 50 people in the family and your uncle came up and slapped the shit out of me, you're not going to call the cops. If you it, wouldn't call the cops. It was on, it's not a family thing. He's I, in the inner sure circle. it is. The, as, it's on TV, it's public yeah, it's on and there's television, security but I mean you're, you're talking about these celebrities, most of them are friends or friends yeah. of friends Bro. and they all they have well, their, their own little community. Where they, have you been the last two years on dude? stage to them is like gold No, because this is ratings, dude. right? For that for him to come up there, yes. walk up they're like, "Oh, Will Smith, what's he going to do? Maybe he's going to grab the mic and say something or whatever and then slap Bro, him. Bro, where have you been the last two years? Everybody got to wear a mask unless you're celebrity everybody's business shut okay, down yeah, unless okay, you're well, yeah, now you're taking a different turn no it's I'm the same about, shit no i know that you, i don't think this is an example Bullshit. of like them being overly privileged 100 bro he smacked him a, sat down yelled at him no, sat this down. is more of a this is a, a and they got a, to get his award after a hell no that's a, a a a private group of them that you that you would not call the cops this, in that situation. this is not private at all and there's hella yes, security there there's it's the, the there's hella security to keep outside people coming in. Exactly. But it's literally like your right. uncle smacking your friend. No, it, yeah. it is. These are the privileged celebrities. They, they they have their own fucking rules. They do what they want. And look again. I don't think that's the angle. To I hundred percent. I don't think that's the angle to oh, take here. This deal, isn't an example no, I, of, listen, of then, privilege. The right next here, time celebrities just... try to talk to you about how about privilege and how they're so enraged over the latest you know thing that just happened and oh my god I care about the world and we need, all need to it, fuck off. You guys live in your own bubble. You do whatever the hell you want. You get away with shit all the time. That one hundred percent would have act, been totally different had it not been a celebrity. Had it been someone else in the audience. Walk because there's other people in the audience that aren't celebrities. If they walked up there, first of all, security would grab their ass before they would got up there. Second, if they hit Chris Rock, yeah. you're fucking out, dude. Yeah, they. Yeah, I mean, they no well, way. Okay, so yeah, rules, back to that. Like, okay, so if we were at our family barbecue and some stranger came into the barbecue and did that, but they're not strangers. I, no, they're I'm friends of each other. I'm saying. So and, that's why I'm everyone, saying somebody th attending the Oscars. I know, who's okay, not a celebrity. Okay, well then somebody at, somebody at your barbecue that doesn't like. Your your uncle gets slapped by a, a distant person you know don't know each other, but they know they know each other. They know they know each other. It's like I said, it's more like friends that are having that's, a, a spew. That's you're my, not calling the cops. No, on that. my point mm -hmm. is it's televised. It's a big event. There's lots of people there, and you're right. They make their own rules for themselves, but they preach to everybody else about how great you need to be. Well, and now that's be. and that's also now now you're going that direction. You're also taking the 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 angle that it's probably true. I don't believe it's true. I think it's bullshit. Now let's talk yeah. about that. I think, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think, let's talk about that. I think that Hollywood has been drowning. For let's talk about their ratings and these uh, irrelevant award shows. Yes. They're irrelevant. For the and today they're not. Years. Today they are the most relevant news. Yeah. I mean, they they're ahead Every of Ukraine feed. right now on television, <laughs> yeah, bro. Like exactly. that's crazy. Like that, yeah. but that's how popular this. this you thought has it was become. staged like uh, Janet okay. Jackson's nipple and all okay, that shit. Yeah. Listen to me. So he got cheated on, right? His wife cheated on him previously. <laughs> yeah. Right. With, hey. Yeah. His son's rapper friend. Keep your he wife, knows a guy. Keep your yeah. wife's name out of your mouth. But what? You put whatever there? you want. Her mouth. Why did he slap the shit out of him? Yeah, I know. Well, that's the I case that know. people are making. Is like, okay, so he gets all defensive about a Chris Rock joke about her hair and stuff like that. But then he, yeah. He so sleeping. like, so the I guess that whole thing is like it, it boiled up to this point where yeah. like you know he just took it out on. If, 
Chris Rock. If it's but re- that's like totally not if plausible. It's, to if me. it's real, there's a lot more behind that. Obviously, if he, it was, real, it would have right? been Mal. There, a lot more oomph in that. So he would have tried to hurt. Well, him. so right away, right him. away, I called, I, I called bullshit right away. Now, the only thing that made me kind of go back and forth was they. I mean. Two things that was like play- the whole thing afterwards. Uh, yeah, real. acting the acting part on Chris Rock's piece afterwards. Yeah, and then with Jada's original reaction. So if you, I got to, I mean, I watched all kinds of different clips and angles and bullshit. And you know, when he first is telling the beginning of the joke, uh, Will Smith is laughing with him. I mean, he's laughing, and literally, when he's got Jada's name in his mouth, yeah, and he's Jada's laughing. Jada's just kind of looking but, over there. But, but then he looks at Jada. Yeah, then you see Jada make kind of like this kind of, a, she looks she embarrassed, says, uh-uh. or she doesn't like it, she kind of yeah. looks away. Yeah, that's when he got defensive. And then you see his face change, and then you see him go up. So that's the part. And then the way Chris Rock lost his lines afterwards, yeah. and could, wasn't all there, like that part of it. That part seemed very real, yeah. but the, the I, awkwardness and the tension was real. For but they're sure. both actors, but, dude. Chris Rock's an actor too yeah. now, so I don't put it past them to stage something to get more attention. I mean, especially with what's been happening with Hollywood, they're getting their ass kicked by social media and streaming yeah. stuff. Well, my kids don't even know who they are. Right. Well, I'm look, not even joking. If they st- if they if they stage or excuse me schedule a celebrity boxing match between Will Smith and Chris Rock, then, then I'm going to be on. Yeah, I'm yeah. Then, you, sure. then you know for dude, sure. You, you're trying to tell Paul me they have learned from the, the Paul brothers. They haven't learned yeah. from all of these other uh, platforms like, you know, from YouTube, from yeah. uh, all these other uh, avenues where people learn that all anything they can do to create conflict bro, how and celebrity boxing though. and all this stuff is like so bro, popular right now. Like You said that on text last night and I thought all I could think of was like, how embarrassing is that if they did stoop to that level? Like to the where they have to it's go shameful. Jerry Springer just to Jerry get Springer attention. style for sure. Damn. I, I, so I, I personally think it's real. I'm not saying that I'm not a hundred percent, but I think it's real because of the awkwardness. And I think it's, there's more risk to people's careers and there is, potential positives. So that makes me, th- and I, and I, but I do think there was more to it. Like, I mean, how are we going to know it's real? Though? Well, you know, okay. So, so, uh, Vicky earlier made a great point. She said, remember all that, the, the heat that Will Smith got for, because his wife cheated on him, they had an open relationship and he looked like a, kind of like a, like a beta. Yeah. Like, wow. You let your wife. So I wonder if that's weighing on him. Then he goes there, he sees her face and he's like, he, I gotta, I gotta be a man about this. I gotta come up and stand up for my family type of deal and show the whole world. So we went up there and did that, and then you know did the yelling. I but mean, I got there think was a lot more behind it. I definitely, I, you got to think he's definitely regretting his whole what's it called, red table or whatever they do, where they just like put their Shit. their family business. And I mean, that to me is just uh, that's probably what led to all this. That's the demise of most. It, I think it was um, oh, what was his name, um, uh, the guy who's the the mayor of Clint Eastwood. So like Clint Eastwood did that in his family, right? And they had oh like, he did that. I didn't know that a reality show. And it like totally just ruined the dynamic uh, of his family. Like every time like a celebrity pulls in the cameras and like brings in the family besides, I guess the Kardashians. Yeah. How, how, uh, disaster addi- happens. how addicted to attention and money do you have to be to want to bring that on? In your own family. Yeah. Like your real family. Yeah. Like, Never. I mean, like, Never. like, like Will needs money. Like the guy doesn't need money, no. so why he doesn't? And he doesn't need any more cameras or attention. He's got plenty of it if he wants it. What What's the desired outcome? of putting your family's fucking laundry on national television like that. It's it's all dysfunctional. It's super dysfunctional. Totally. The has whole to thing be, is dysfunctional. It has to be. Like- I, I would not wish, uh, I, I would never, that's why I'm kind of private about my kids. Like I would, I, I get it if you're an adult and you do something and then there's fame that comes along with it, which brings a lot of challenges. Yeah. But if you're a kid and you're growing up and your parents are famous, so you're famous as a result of your parents and you're a kid now you feel like you get all this attention and love and you feel more important than you are and creates this distorted ego. And you're going to bring more of that on. Here's our family. Bring the cameras. Uh, so if terrible. we, if we agreed yeah. this is real, which I don't, I don't, well, but let's pretend we do. There's one more point I got to make. Okay. That was a terrible joke. It was like way it, beneath Chris Rock. Like it, like it wasn't that it was big just, of a deal. Yeah. It was like, it, it, it just seemed to me like it wasn't, it, it was just something that he just kind of threw out there. Uh, and and it, I don't know if you like, 
again, to, to the whole thing, it didn't seem very planned, but it just seemed like a really just lame joke. Well, doesn't that make it feel planned to you? The fact that it yes, was a lame joke? Exactly. It's like, what That's can we do? Point. What can we do to get a jab to get him to come up and do that? There's like, got to be more to it. Exactly. Because he's be so polished and calculated about like delivering his lines and, and punch lines. And, you know, and that, that joke was just a terrible joke. But I know, but it, you know, those jokes normally, the, when they do the shows or like that, or they're normally pretty terrible jokes because yeah. they got to ride them. For they the, have writers writing them for them. Yeah, too. so a lot of times so, they are terrible. So okay, but I don't. Let's know. let's pretend we do all agree that it's real. Yeah. Whose side of this are you on? Oh, side. I, I'm on Chris Rock's side. So, here. Uh, well, look, because here's the thing: because people are like, yeah. "What you you would defend Chris Rock?" Yeah, he's a fucking comedian. That's his job. Yeah, and you're and at, you and you're at a show. Yeah, exactly. It's not like he's, he walked up to him on the street. So yeah. I mean, you you we, you have to be okay with yeah. that. I mean, we we've talked about the assault. It's actually less manly. Can, yeah, no, no, no. It's actually you can walk out. I mean, that's yes, totally not. It's actually less manly to go to a show. Get so offended by a joke that you you're imp you lose impulse you lose your your you can't control your faculties you go up and you swing at someone. We've we've already talked I about agree. this the the assault on on comedians already in the last yeah. like you yeah. know two to three years. He should have left. That's what I would have done if I was him and I felt like as bad as he did at a show. I'd say let's go. We're leaving. That's how I would react. I mean I don't even think I do that. You know if it really bothered me then it's something we off air I talk. I, you know I pull him aside. Exactly. Oh, I really wanted to fight him. Yeah, I probably I say, hey, him after yeah, the show. Probably in your best like, hey, interest the next this. time you do a, a stand up event you leave my wife's mouth, yeah. mouth out of it and I just tell man to man nobody has to hear about yeah, it or know yeah. about it that he knows going forward. But I mean you're you're at a, a, a you know quote unquote comedy show. I know right. it's the There's the, more to it dude cuz she looked at her husband. She, so Jada looked at uh, uh at Will and that's when he got mad. And that someone made a said something on Twitter that made me think of this. They said that's the sign of an emotionally abused man. Like his wife is looking at him and he's like, oh, gotta react, because maybe there's lots of other shit behind, you know, going doing right. that where he needs to show this outward expression of like, you know, I'm the I'm your man. I'm the I I love you. I'm your husband, you know. Type I mean, if deal. it's real, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I but I but again, I go back to this. Look, dude, it, it it's on TV, it's it's publicized, there's security there, it's a fucking it's a private club public event, really. Yeah. Anybody else did that? If because there's other there's other non celebrities in the audience. If a makeup artist walked up there and smacked someone, one hundred percent their ass would have got kicked out. One hundred percent. It's Will Smith. He sat back down, got to go get his best uh, actor award, got to make a speech. What? Yeah, but like what? Half, I, half of him being there is to receive the award that they already knew he was going to get. Yeah, yeah. So I, it's I, like I just I don't like that like, argument, dude. I just I don't do, like. I, I hate it, bro. I don't like that argument. But I am so sour. I'm so sour, man. I'm so sour of seeing them totally do the opposite of what and they preach. Yeah. They preach well, they everybody. Love bad behavior with celebrities, you know, they, they, that's what the they live for. They like they want that photo op of you know, somebody at the club like beating somebody up or yeah. whatever because then it's again what we're doing right now is just promoting the same news of what they just created dude they got the best ratings of all time probably because exactly of that i mean they're so I, irrelevant can't, you can't Does anybody deny care? i can't tell you the last time that i woke up and opened up my feeds and just, seen the same thing. I mean, yeah. he, like, bigger than the war. Like, also, okay. Like, that's how fucking weird we yeah, are, bro. That's can how we, fucking weird our society Andrew, is. I know. Put, put, up, put up the meme with Batman slapping the shit out of Robin. Tell me it doesn't look exactly the same. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I shit you not, you guys. This is Justin's <laughs> evidence. <laughs> Fake. <laughs> <laughs> they just literally staged the, the ultimate meme to, to hey, flood everybody's hey, uh, hey, Justin, social media. That would be, bro. Hey, You're like playing 3D put chess that on right there, now, dude. Bro. This, this guy's playing 3D chess high right now. Yeah, hey, He's like, hey, I'm not even high right now, Craig. Hey, Justin, Justin's entire argument is the biomechanics of the slap. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, Jet boys. That's uh, his not technique, dude. I broke it down. That's like, not how you properly slap videos. someone. That's a movie slap in yeah, real life. That a is real a movie slap. slap. Nobody slaps somebody like that. Uh, oh. Yeah, I don't know. I well, don't know, dude, come on. He also looked like he kind of smirked when he walked back. He did, did. You think so? and so did Chris Rock. Had that could all be smile, nervous. And then he was like, "Yeah, Whoa. you're right." That, that could all be like, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. That could all be nervous shit. Bro. It's true. It's true. Yeah, people act weird when they're you know nervous or you know. I'm sure he realized well, he didn't know what to do, and he's like, "I got punked," you know, too. Yeah, so, yeah, dude, there's a lot. If it, I mean, if I think it was, I mean, I really feel like if it was, I have no idea. I feel like if it was real, like the move. Chris Rock as a comedian to see the guy coming up you just made a joke with his wife would be to like hey man like pretend like you're gonna run away well or, he didn't know what he was gonna do yeah I think I think he knew exactly what to do which is why he stood his ground like that listen uh, if a dude yeah. walked 
up to you. Know him or not. Yeah, know but him. you don't know what's you just talk, I just talk about your wife yeah. in, in a disrespectful way, and you start walking towards me, and you think my hands aren't going to go up, or I'm not going to at least yeah, get in a defensive like, posture. Yeah, exactly. Like, Lean you back. ain't coming up to give me a hug. I know yeah, that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? You, so, like, and, what is he going to do? Yeah, yeah how like, do you, how like, do you, if you really <laughs> were worried that someone was going to come up, or he's going to come up like that, oh. I, I mean, you don't. You don't do any you sort just of posture with his hands behind his back. Uh, he yeah. did. He did make a fist though. Did you see a picture after he got uh, hit? He instinctively made a fist. Like, I didn't see that. Like he was going to do something. Okay, and then thought twice, <laughs> yeah. and then was like, "Wait a minute, he's way bigger than me." <laughs> I don't know, man. Who knows? You know, these they're celebrities. Can they really fight? Well, so, okay, so what, I hope Jake Paul now, gets. What, a what's interesting about all this is like good, you know, will question. we ever know? Like how? Like yeah. how? How does how does this get proven to be staged? Other than like somebody. Leaking? Here's the deal, okay. And here's what happens: you hit a comedian. Good question. Here's my prediction: you hit a comedian for making a joke. Will Smith is going to be the butt of every comedian's. Oh, joke he's. Are, I've never seen so many memes made about something bro, so fast, bro. You don't. Comedians could get dark and they could fuck with you so hard. Yeah. And I guarantee all the it just comedians. It makes you look super insecure. They're, yeah, they're going to band behind Chris Rock. And I guarantee yeah. you, every stand up, whatever, they're going to make, they're going to hammer Will Smith now. That's why, that's yep. why, again, it doesn't make sense to me, too, to do, to react that way. Like, yeah. it's like, I mean, you just made it worse. Way if worse. you if you thought that joke was bad about your wife, yeah. get ready because exactly. because now the gloves are going to really come off on people. And that, there's enough material there. Oh, there's <laughs> yeah. so much. There's so much material there. So, and it, it's already started. I mean, I've been posting them all day today. All these memes that are coming out. It's like uh, I, every time I open my phone, I get a new three that are sent to me. I'm like, oh my god, they are going ham right oh, now. Man. Oh, it's yeah, nuts. Dude. Well, you know, they got some viewers. Very now. bizarre, but hey, they they definitely got us to talk about. I yeah. mean, I like that's what I, Justin said that first, right? I really think that that. Now, how it, are they going to bring back the viewers? Maybe the next. Oscar awards. Chris Rock's going to speak again, and Will Smith will be in the audience again. No, Kanye's going to come out of you know he's going to get airlifted in, and, you know, try like kick somebody. Yeah, I don't know. Kanye will do the awards ceremony. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine that if we really are moving in this direction of like Jerry Springer, everything like this, that's that to me is the best. Well, that's Jerry Springer. People might not know this if they're not you know our age or whatever, but talk shows were serious for a long time. You had yeah. Donahue. And Oprah, and then they they were like trying to figure out how to squeeze out more ratings, and then it became like uh, paternal tests, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then it became, uh, you know, fighting. What was on his stage. name with the beard and then the glasses? That um, he he used to be like a, a in, like a journalist that was out in um, like Iraq. Oh, and, you're talking about uh, Geraldo. Geraldo, thank you. Oh, Remember yeah. when he, get, he got like his nose broken, dude. Uh, in some interview, yes. and then that became like the butt of yeah, the jokes. Dude. Everybody, oh, yeah. my favorite were the paternal tests. What was the guy's name that did those? Where so, oh, you are no, not that was Jerry father. Springer. That was no, Jerry no, Springer. No, uh, Maury Povich. There you go. When it comes to four-month-old Donye, Andrew, you are not the father. <laughs> Yeah, he's you are not the father. You ever watch always the guy, doing the, those. the dances the dudes yeah. do afterwards where they're not the dad? They just start dancing across oh! the face. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, the girl's just crying. Oh, you know? like, ah. I saw one where she had four dudes lined up. And they all had to do a, a, oh my a test, God. and they all came back Bro, negative. We're going right back to the bottom of the barrel. That's yeah, my we prediction. I know, dude. Yeah, anyway. we are. Hey, speaking of crazy shit, uh, the, uh, the last All In podcast was really good about economics. <laughs> yeah, that's like negative crazy I know. shit. <laughs> I don't even like talking about. But that. they were they were talking about economics and kind of moving ahead. What we're gonna we're gonna see with the uh, so it sounded bleak from what you guys were trying to describe to me. Like what were they? Well, uh, it's bleak because we're us. angel investors and we really got into. To that in the last year and so basically almost everything right of course there's always going to be outliers of course there's just, still just, gr great businesses but and, but what it does highlight is the, the debate and conversation we had around tonal yeah i mean talk about uh overpriced yeah way overpriced and they're they're saying bro they're saying between 30 and 50 percent yeah wow. they're saying companies that were getting valuations in the last two years it was so ridiculously uh, overinflated. The way that, the, that well, I forgot who explained it, it was really well. Um, the guest they really had. said, yeah. And then uh, Sachs came back and kind of broke it down even further. Um, that the way in, in when the markets everything's blowing up, and we it was a lot of distortions, right? Lots of money injected into the market. They that what you look at for valuations is growth. That's the main thing. How fast can you grow? But when things start to settle, it becomes growth. But then it also becomes margins and burn rate. Because when you have a startup 
in order to grow, before you start to become profitable, you have to spend more to grow more, spend more to grow more. And if that spend means that it'll take you three or four years to get back that money yeah. in this market, it's not going to be cool anymore. Right. So, so they're saying that a lot of things are going to get repriced. A lot of valuations are going to drop. So, of all yeah, the there's people, there's people. They're used to like this is a big strategy. You wait till the last round of funding before a company goes public to make a quick yeah uh, to make a quick a quick buck uh, off of that. But what they're saying is there's going to be a lot of people that use that strategy, and when it goes to IPO, it's going to be you know thirty to fifty percent less yeah. than what they bought in at. So those people technically are going to now lose one of the money. companies that we invested in that mm -hmm. I really still feel good about is Luna mainly because they're so disruptive to the the physical therapy market. Yeah, there's such a need for it. There's a huge need for it, and it saves money for insurance companies, and physical therapists like it more because they make more money and they have more flexibility, and patients like it more because the PT comes to your house, um, and we, we obviously saw their projections and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's still a, a, a total win. But, yeah. you know, but a lot of other ones, I'm like, oh. I, I mean, know. I want to, I, I definitely don't want to debate that. <laughs> I, think, I mean, I, wa I want you to be 100% yeah. right on. I'm in your corner. I, I do. I yeah. agree, though, because, I mean, obviously, I, I look at the companies that we invested in and the ones I probably feel the most confident. Are we, there's a few companies that we invested in that were already profitable. So that's a, that's a good sign, right? Yeah. And that those are the ones that are most likely going to make it out of this. Um, Luna was not one of those, but I do agree with you that they're the space that they're in, the size that they already currently are at, um, and the fact that you're dealing with insurance. They're uh, just so disruptive. Well, and it, there's very rarely do you see something move into a space like that. And like the, 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 I mean, what is it? The consumer, the creator, and like even like like ever insurance like yeah. everybody wins. That's what I like mean. Everybody is going to save more, make more type it's, of situation. It's like ride sharing. That's, that's, that's rare that you yes. see that. Yeah. It's like ride sharing versus taxi. Of course, it's going to crush. Right. Everybody yeah. likes it more. Yes. And Better experience for the consumer. Yeah. The drivers make and more I money. And I see I see markets. Luna is going to open up markets that were already there, but they but people didn't take advantage of them because of the logistics. I'll give you a big example. My favorite example is postpartum physical therapy. Every woman should get postpartum physical therapy because childbirth and pregnancy changes the way your body works, changes muscle recruitment patterns. There's pelvic floor issues afterwards, all these issues post, uh, uh, uh that physical therapy has tr such tremendous benefits. But the problem is a woman who just had a baby is not going to go to the physical therapy office. She has a newborn at home and uh -huh. it's a big, it's a pain in the ass. I know I have kids. I know what that looks like. It's a pain in the ass to drive all the way to a physical therapy. Where am I going to do with my baby? Where's it? Whatever. So they don't do it. And they end up waiting six, seven, eight months. By that point, you've developed some bigger problems. So postpartum PT is so valuable, but people don't do it because of that. With Luna, now they come to your house. Yeah. So I think that market's going to blow up. Where And it's all covered by insurance anyway. So you have your baby as part of your post, you know, your, your care. PT comes, as soon as you're cleared, they come to your, your door they take you through different movements and exercises and things that help with all the stuff that happens during pregnancy. So that one I think is going to, that alone will be massive uh, yeah. in my oh, opinion. I can no, see I, that. Yeah. I agree with Speaking that. Speaking of our sponsors, I want to uh, talk <coughs> about uh, a really cool back workout kind of, and this, is, it is, this isn't necessarily anything special, but if it's novel for you, this is such a great workout. So you know how the PRX um, cage or whatever that folds out, right? And it's got the pull-up handle. Yeah. With like, I don't know, it's like six different grip positions on it. So that's that. an extra model. You have Doug, should Doug should look that up because it's not like not every rack comes with that. I know that we opted yeah. to to get well, that it's one. Usually the ones with the lower ceilings, you can't really opt in for that. Okay. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is it's only it's only the taller ones? Yeah. I don't know if it had anything to do with the height that that bar is, but I do know that that there's certain models that are just a straight up pull-up bar, but then the one you're talking about has all the cool yes. grip variations, yeah, so which like, I love. And one the, I just I did this today, great back workout. You literally my goal, so back in the day there was a workout that Arnold used to talk about where he would do pull-ups until he hit 50 reps. So essentially, however many you do the first set, subtract it from 50, and you keep doing sets until you hit a total of 50. So you end up doing you know, eight sets or whatever for, of pull-ups. So that's what I did. And what I did was is I, I did wide grip, closer grip, neutral grip, supinated grip, super close grip, and I just kept alternating and getting a different feel and the most crazy back pump of all time. It's a great, really, really great, easy workout without tons of That's equipment. an, I didn't know that was an Arnold thing. I did that for a while. I must've got it from him then. Cause I, yeah. I did a, where I started every, where every back workout you had to do 50. with 50 pull-ups. Yeah. Didn't matter how many sets, just however many sets I can get it done in. Right. 
Yeah. So which one is it, Doug? They it's an option on any of their racks or most of them, at least the tall ones. Oh, okay. It's so called it, the multi grip bar. Oh, cool. Oh, so it's not actually the rack. It's it's just the multi grip bar. Yeah. So there's all kinds of different racks that you can get, and then uh, the top one of each of the categories has that additional. Now, what does it bump it up like to to go from like the, if you were to get the most basic standard rack without that, and then you decide to go do that? How much more are you bumping to do that? It's about three hundred dollars more. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, so I mean, but, that, but that's plans on that, from though. the very bottom rack to the very top rack. Yeah. So. And then this is all payment. You can also do where you pay. Yeah, monthly. no, I, I love their whole like because they have a gym calculator on here, right? So if you pay a gym membership, you can kind of f and see what you get for the yeah, same price. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, no, I think it's great that they do that. Yeah. So you no, can it's convenient that it has all those different grip points uh, in one place because we used to have um, at that other gym I worked at, we used to have some rock climbers in there that put some grips. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, and then they got to the point where they could even do pull ups with like a finger. Oh, that's so and rad. they had those, which also, which would be a cool addition to this if there's an accessory that hangs down that's these two like balls yes. that you grab. I think they do have that. <laughs> I'm waiting for the joke. All right. But anyway, yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. Justin's tough. looking for some balls to do some pull-ups on. Adam. Hey, speaking of hey, speaking of workouts, Justin, yeah. I, I purposely didn't ask you about this. I want to hear about it on the show. So you started working out with your football team that you're that you're coaching. Like just like today. lifting yourself? Well, yeah, because this, this sounds like such a fun, but also bad idea. Yeah, it's probably a bad idea. Yeah. I got to a point now where the workouts are firmly established and I'm going around and checking form and it's, it's good enough where like, I don't have to be so involved anymore, which is nice. I'm like kind of just, you know, looking around and, yeah. and so I started to, to, to talk trash with some of the kids and try to, <laughs> this, to I knew lift it. a little bit more weight. Oh, and God. so then they had what me jump thinking? in with them. I started jumping in with them a little bit and, uh, yeah, I started to throw some weight around in there. So yeah. oh, we'll yeah. see how I got to calm down. I'll calm down. I know like my limitations now and like what to do. Shut when up. Your face, You're bro. not going to shut your face. It's not going to no, affect hey, me, dude. Listen, there is no, there is this no This is the guy way. that picked up the freaking. 300 pound kid and decided to carry him across the field just yeah. to show him what oh, time it was. Oh, you remember was. that. Uh, yeah, yeah, bro. Are hey, you kidding me right there now? There is no Oops. way a, a what a, a terrible a, idea. A middle-aged man <laughs> who has a lifting experience is going to work out with a bunch of teenage <laughs> boys and not flex on them all the time. I mean, There's no way. Only, especially only when he challenge gets a, me, dude. Yeah, I was going to say, especially yeah. when you get a strong one who's actually going to do some serious they ain't weight. even close yet. So, oh, they're not. <laughs> dude, good luck. You know, I can, I can, okay, so, I can lift these baby weights all day. Okay, so I'll get, I mean, if you're like, I mean, if you're like twenty percent heavier than them and ever, all lifts, then maybe yeah. that's such a big deal. I think, I think, but I would be a little nervous. There's yeah. that little strong like lineman who I'm could totally probably out squat me in there. Like, <laughs> I'm totally with you guys with that. It's just like for me, I'm trying to find new ways to spark. Um, uh, them to to pursue more of a struggle, yeah. You know? And it's like you can tell them all day, but sometimes I think you just gotta show them. You're, yeah. Okay, so let me ask you a question: Did you do squats with them? I didn't do squats yet. I did okay. bench and, and oh, you did bench. And, okay, yeah. let me guess: Did you put let me you put over two fifty on the bar? Uh, oh yeah, I was just repping three fifteen. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought, bro. You, yeah, but, you never put three plates on it here. No, because nobody. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I know. Yeah. <laughs> because they're i mean everybody the highest i see there's like 185 i'm like this is bullshit like where's my 200 kids you yeah know? like where are you at <laughs> so it's kind of like it. a little call out i love it oh, i know that i know the feeling bro. Bro. you have to oh, you God. have to yeah. i i, I, I just be started, sore tomorrow dude. i just started working out at, at a gym again i st I signed up uh at club sport again just so i could use the the steam and sauna and did you have to re-sign up or was it still going from when we all signed up last time uh they they, they froze it because I'm like I'm not oh, coming. Okay. I'm not wearing me. a mask while I come work out. <laughs> Stupid. So now everything's cool. So I went over yeah. and they let me reinstate it. So I started training again over there. Um, and it's you know I, I'm having a good time. It's a good time. A lot a lot of machines. So now I can focus more on just kind of the body sculpting thing and and you know the steam and sauna after. I love that man. You do uh, the sauna, sauna after sauna is great. And then cold rinse. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I feel like well, a especially bucks. after talking to Doctor Cabral, you yes. know about uh, how much toxins and everything we we store. Oh, dude. And I was like, wow, okay, that makes it even more like I want to do sauna again even more. Now. I'm trying to get the mercury out of my system. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. I, mean, be, I can't wait till when the filter gets here. You already ordered that, right, Doug? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to see if that, that's going to be crazy mm -hmm. if just by putting this filter in here, all of a sudden it drops mm -hmm. all of us. I mean, that's the only thing that made sense to me that we all do, you know? Yeah. There's, there's no <coughs> other explanation. I mean, we're not 
out there eating, you know, a bunch of uh, mercury. And not that much fish. fish. Definitely not tuna. I'm not eating like that at all, especially right now. That's why it was. It's got to so... be one of these industrial lights or something, right? That's like emitting Doug, mercury. Doug his light ideas. <laughs> do that, or, or okay, we could do it in the dark. Kill you know? all of us, dude. What what's that? Hey, what's that? What's that? So he's uh, just breaking thermometers in here. Just... Yeah, Justin, what's that disorder where like the mom will slowly poison her kids? Munchausen. Yeah, Munchausen. Yeah, what if Doug's Munchausen? Yeah. What if he's like, <laughs> I'm doing it to myself for God's sake. Okay, he's that's like, part of the scam, yeah, though. No, you know what I'm saying when, they, when he did the hair test, Doug's like, "Fuck, they're gonna see mercury." Yeah, I'll take some Adam's hair. He sprinkles it in his <laughs> hair. <laughs> hey, look, I got mercury too, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's, his was the highest. Uh, <laughs> hey, you're right, uh, winner. Yeah, yeah. yeah know. You know that this weekend was uh, for Justin and I, right? We both uh, daddy daycare, right? Oh, you guys oh, yeah. were both at the same same time, right? I tell you what, mine a little different, but I'll listen to yours. Yeah. Well, ours. I mean, it was four days, right? So this is the the longest without Katrina. This is also the first time that she has taken off, like uh, for like a whole weekend or four days, right? Oh, good for her. Uh, yeah, no, totally uh, her turn to be able to get to do this. I've done it like in short spurts where we go travel or whatever. And I and I told her like because she was just like you know you, you I got this. I said, "Hun, just go have a good time. You'll be fine. We're gonna be fine. We're we're gonna live." But I forget what I was just going to tell you. I was going to tell you guys about her her reaction to. Uh, did, now, did he do anything? Like, was he missing mommy? Was, was no, he, like... he was he was great, dude. It was uh, it was a the whole point of me telling or bringing it up was it all. And I and I've said this before that I had this appreciation for single parents after going through oh, that. Yeah. And by the way, he was easy. Like he was such a good. Yeah, you kid. got a good kid. Oh yeah, he yeah. got better. He was he was he was sick the previous week, so he's always a handful when he's sick. So he was he's healthy. So he's in a great mood since he's been healthy. Went to bed on time. Slept all night. I mean, he was just a he was just an absolute gym. But I tell you what, two two things. Uh, one, I I did not find any time to eat like that. Actually, like, this has to be like a great weight loss strategy because I'm so <laughs> concerned about taking care of him, feeding him, staying on his schedule and stuff like that. Like a couple of times I found myself going like, oh shit, I haven't eaten today. I've Dude, been I always end up eating at like eight or nine o'clock because I'm like, oh, I forgot about dinner. Bro, like, it's all it's, it's all consuming because yeah. they're on you all the time, especially when they're little. It's like, what are you going to do? I mean, I just can't, I I I have such a huge respect. I know, for imagine any, single any, parents any single with multiple parents. kids. Yeah, just, yeah. no. I have a friend, she's got two little ones, a baby and a, and a little, a, a toddler. I'm like, how do you, how do you I mean, like to, 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 I didn't get a train. I didn't get, I didn't work out one time in the four days. Uh, I ate very little. I mean, cause the option is like to eat what he's eating. I'm not eating anything he's eating. Right. So I don't want to, you know, squeezies and like, you know, <laughs> waffle or like, I'm not going to eat what he's eating. So I really had very, very little food during that time. And I, and I didn't have a breakaway time to train. Now, granted, I, I get that if this was like my life and I wasn't a single dad, I would figure all these things out, you know? And yeah. like, of course I would eat consistently of course i would find a way to get my workouts in but man when that when that's your your main focus uh is it's really tough to prioritize yourself so i totally get it and understand yeah. where parents get very consumed yeah. by their kids and taking care of them you, you definitely know? appreciate your significant other in these moments. oh it's yeah like i because like I, poor courtney she uh she had uh surgery because there was just this thing we had to get out of the throat um that uh it just was irritating her constantly and like, i don't want to get into too much detail yeah, there's a wife it. joke there but i'm gonna leave it alone i know right i was, yeah. I, was getting <laughs> I don't want to get will too smith deep dude. in there yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got good i'll do my own jokes <laughs> yeah um <laughs> yeah so anyway i had to remove uh it wasn't their tonsil but almost yeah. and so anyway like her throat is just messed up she's on all these painkillers and the, the worst part of it was uh, in the surgery, they actually nicked uh, her tongue, and so she's got an inch like long, just cut. Oh. And when your when your tongue is cut, it is painful. True. Ugh. And so she, it's poor thing. She's just got all this pain, and you know can't swallow, and it's just like so. I'm just you know super dad mode, just trying to like yeah. get everybody doing stuff. And I took the kids to their gymnastic meet this weekend in Sacramento, and like uh, you know putting all their stuff in their gear together, like. I did not realize how like <laughs> incompetent like my kids are with like <laughs> like putting things they're in that dude. they're supposed to put in. I'm like like 
like Everett, for instance, they wear this like kind of onesie unitard yeah. thing, and then you put shorts over it, and like so, and then he just puts his his track outfit on the outside, right? Doesn't put his shorts on. We were almost leaving the house. He would have been there with with his just onesie without his shorts. <laughs> <laughs> like, what were you thinking, dude? And like Courtney caught that right before I left, oh, and I'm like, oh, thank God, you know. Like, there's just multiple examples of that, but I'm like, man, like you must pull your hair out constantly. And she's like. Oh, like, dude, I was trying. I was trying to bat a hundred with her being out, like not have to call her, not ask any questions, nothing, right? And like seriously, perfect weekend. And then Saturday, I take him to a birthday party over in Lodi, and uh, and I leave. And I it was unfortunate. I left. He was in one of his moods where he decided that he didn't really want to go play with everybody. He wanted to be in the house with me or one other kid playing instead of being in the jump house and being outside yeah. on the grass and the slide like and so i was just all day with him like playing with him and never got a chance to kind of socialize with anybody so i took him home and when i left i get a, a screenshot picture from my best friend's wife and it's his fucking diaper bag i'm like how did I you left it there <laughs> <laughs> with all his stuff dude yeah. like and then like the whole weekend has been great. I haven't had, to, and that thread has actually got Katrina in it. And I'm like, oh man, I was trying not to like have anything that was like fucked up on Dad's part while I was watching. Yeah, like, you want to let her know about that? Diaper Come on. bag, dude. I got this handle. Oh now, man, dude. it's yeah. it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work, and this is why being a stay at home parent can be lonely. You know, like if you're a stay at home parent, like you don't you 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 hear them say, right? I I I don't have any adult interaction. It's constant about my kid. I can't do anything for myself. <clears throat> Um, it's tough. This is why when I hear parents or no, when I hear people who don't have kids mm -hmm. judging parents, I, I want to Will Smith them in the face. I want to slap them because yeah. you have no idea. Like, you know how you, you ever hear people like, Oh, you, you, you put your kids in front of TV. Yeah. I would never. Oh yeah. You feed your kids. Oh yeah. I would know. Oh, your kids are acting up. Yeah. I would like, dude, you have no idea, bro. Yeah. You act like you're I so bad at my own food. Yeah. You don't I have kids. You have no idea what it's like. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Shut up. Bro. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm was just telling my dad, my dad came by and visited over the weekend and I was telling him like, you know, one of the things I've learned as a, as a parent in my short time, two and a half years, right. Is that I know better now to say I'm I'm never gonna do oh, that. Bro. I'm always gonna, you, like that you is learn like, that real fast. Yeah, yeah, you're like you so like when so I always like people like ask the you, seasoned parents just sit here and smile. Yeah, I just go no comment now. I say yeah. we'll see or I'm gonna try this. Yeah. You know, okay. Say that's my okay. that's my strategy. Yeah. I mean, even you know talking about the 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 TV thing. Like I really believed I was gonna give him no TV till he was like five. You know what I'm saying? Like I was gonna say no television. Yeah. Till and I, I mean, for the most part, I thought we were really good. And I think. Uh, trying uh, being aware of it has been the most valuable sure. thing right so like on friday and saturday like he did get no tv him and i were playing we we're outside like he was with my dad for a while like we went to the park like just and he was an absolute saint yesterday you know it's the, the we're waiting for katrina to come home we slept in it's sunday like we weren't going anywhere i was just like you know what let's let's lay around and watch a little bit of cartoons yeah. in the morning so i let him watch some cartoons in the morning then around i think three or four was the warrior game i really wanted to watch that selfishly katrina still wasn't home so i'm like i will right, pull the ipad out you could watch that i could watch my thing and but you know what bath time he was fucking miserable going down he was hard like i swear man if 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 I it's get, a trade off, dude. it is a trade off, yeah, I and I and so you know, there's times, and what I re recognize as a parent now who who said that he wasn't going to do that at all is that okay, that's not happening. It's going to happen. There's times when it's like this is like a lifesaver to be able to have him some totally. entertained like that. But it also keeps me very aware, though, of how it absolutely disrupts his sleep and changes his behavior. So you, ha I have to be very uh judicious on how i use it it's yeah. like it better damn well be something that i really need help or really need that moment of him being entertained for me to use it anymore or else i can totally see how it look changes. you're not gonna no one's gonna be yeah. no one's gonna be a perfect parent and the more kids you have the less perfect shit is like yeah. you're doing that with one you got one kid yeah, and your yeah. kid's easy he's a good kid yeah. you know he's a very good kid yeah imagine you have two three you got a job two on top of it and you're doing it yeah. all the time not just four days but like this is what i do for the next you know 18 years yeah i mean and you got to take care of yourself a little bit too so like that's why people who judge parents like listen if they're there and they love their kids and they care they're crushing like, like stop judging yeah. them yeah that's it no 100 you know? agree with that hey real quick one of the sponsors we've worked with the longest is organifying there's a reason for that they have exceptional supplements and quality products 
One of my favorites is their green juice. You know, uh, when it comes to eating vegetables and plants, uh, variety is key. It really is. Like the more variety you have, the more you're going to get those awesome exotic micronutrients and phytonutrients that you don't find anywhere else. Well, if you don't do that, I don't. I tend to stick to broccoli and asparagus. You can try Organifi's green juice. It's got superfood green blend, including ashwagandha. Um, it's great for digestion, great for health, recovery. I feel really good when I take it. I, it's probably the only Organifi supplement I take every single day. I take a lot of the products, but that's the one I take every single day. And right now, their green juice came out with a new flavor, Crisp Apple. And let me tell you, Organifi has got magic when it comes to flavors. Their stuff tastes incredible. Try it out. Take it once a day uh, and tell me how you feel. Everybody seems to say that it feels phenomenal. It's one of the most popular products. Again, it's their green juice, crisp green apple. They have, of course, lots of other plant-based products. Go check them out. Head over to mindpumppartners.com. Click on Organifi and then use the code mindpump and you'll get 20% off any of their products. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from K Spanier. One, are abs made in the kitchen? Oh, I like that 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 term there. Actually, let me correct that. Abs are not made in the kitchen. Abs are revealed in the kitchen. Abs are made in the gym. <laughs> right? How many trainers do you feel like have this on their mirror and they look at it every morning, just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. that's right. I mean, yeah. it was a it was a popular thing to tell tell people. I, mean, I understand why why it came. Yeah, came no, I mean, it's it's because you could do you know, all the ab crunches in the world. And if you don't get to a certain body fat percentage, you'll, see you'll never see them. And understand that you have abs. Everybody listening to the show right now, even if you've never done a single crunch in your entire life, you have abs, just like you have biceps, triceps, shoulders, back. I mean, you, you have those muscles and the best and fastest way to reveal them is to reduce body fat and expose them. That it doesn't mean, and I think this is where the extreme of this has gone, where saying abs are made in the kitchen that people just completely now disregard no. the value and the benefits of actually strength training and building your yeah. abdominals. And also I do want to say that, so yes, very true. You have to get lean enough to see them. Otherwise it doesn't matter. Right. But I will say this, uh, a develop, a well-developed muscle is more visible at higher body fat percentages. So a muscular arm is going to look leaner at the same body fat, uh, percentage as a non-muscular arm would look. Same is true for the abs and the obliques. Look, I experienced this myself. So I, through most of my training career, personal training career, I didn't do lots of ab work because I was a skinny kid. So I wanted, and I wanted to get big and build muscle. And so abs were like, who cares, right? Let me focus on everything else. Mm -hmm. And then at one point I, I actually tried to get lean and I did, I get down to like nine, 10, nine percent body fat. And my six pack wasn't really visible unless I flexed really hard. Otherwise it just looked kind of lean. And I normally think nothing of it. Well, anyway, fast forward, I create the MAPS anabolic program and it dawns on me like, you know, I'm going to see what happens if I try to build the muscles of my core. And I did. And my abs and my core responded really well. I was able to build the muscles of my core. And I now will have a re you know reliably visible six pack at like 12% body fat, right? So because the abs are bigger, the muscles are more, are more visible because they're more developed. So Yes, you got to get lean, but that doesn't mean that you're that developing a muscle isn't going to make it look better uh, at higher body fat percentages any, anyway. They both contribute. Yeah, I think, I mean, even in the performance side of, of the world, a lot of times, um, you know, we get stuck in the, in the thought that I'm getting enough ab work because of heavy lifts with backloaded squats with, uh, you know, heavy carries, like I'm stabilizing a lot of weight. And if you look at that, if you don't, you don't train the rest of your muscle groups that way, no. only in an isometric stabilizing position without, you know, it's true, uh, flexing and extending. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's very much of a function of the abs that you want to be able to strengthen. And, and it actually carries over into all kinds of other lifts as well from a strength and support, uh, position. So, uh, but then again, too, you can, you can actually build and, um, you know, gain some size from your abs, which will help them to, you know, stick out, stick out more. And then that is yeah. where the revealing it becomes Dude, a bit more, uh, I'll, easy. I'll tell you something right now. There's like the, the lumbo pelvic hip area when that's strong and developed, you feel that more than almost anything else. Like I could have well-developed strong biceps and triceps and delts and 
and you'll notice when you do certain things, I guess, but when your 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 core and the musculature that supports your core, including the hips, is strong, you are strong. Mm -hmm. You are a strong person. If those are weak, I don't care how strong your arms are and your, and your rest of your legs are, you're not very strong because uh, that that weakness will will it will put the brakes on any kind of force you're trying to produce. So from a performance standpoint, like I tell you what, you find me a really powerful athlete and what you'll find is a well-developed lumbo pelvic hip area, glutes, you'll find, you know, well-developed core, midsection, obliques. It's very, very important uh, muscle group. Work them like anything else. As far as seeing them is concerned, yeah. Yeah. You got to get to a certain leanness. But, you know, Adam said it re perfect. Everybody has abs. You, you look at power lifters with big bellies, they got abs too. They're just not lean enough to see them. Yeah. But trust me, they got strong abs there. Next question is from TM Goodner. Can you help explain why bodybuilding or strength training results in limited mobility? Why is it that when we get stronger and build muscle, our range of motion is limited and moving in the old ways becomes painful? Oh, this is a myth. It's a huge myth. Uh -huh. yeah, However, myth. I would like to address why some people experience this because some people definitely do experience this. They'll start working out with weights mm -hmm. and they'll say, I'm stiffer. Here's what's happening. Okay, First off, it is a myth. Proper full range of motion resistance training improves functional flexibility. It's one of the best ways to give you better functional flexibility. But what, then if why do some people- training in full range of motion. Yes. Why do some people get this? Well, if I gain 50% more strength in a short range of motion, you see bodybuilders do this all the time. Like they'll do a shoulder press, they'll stop right here, right? Or they'll do a bench press, they'll stop right here. Or they'll do a row and they'll have short range of motion. If you in increase your strength dramatically in that short range of motion, what happens is you've actually lost stability in the full range of motion. And so then what your body does to protect itself is it maintains your movement within the stronger range of motion. Because if I can theoretically curl 200 pounds from here to here, but then down here, it's like 50 pounds. Anytime I go to curl, lift something, my body's going to automatically prevent me from moving outside yeah. of my strong range of motion. And that's why you see tightness. Well, it's tightness. not the actual strength training that's produced. It's, no. It's the it's a, way you're training. Yes. And, and so to... To completely shorten your range of motion and try to uh, squeeze the pinnacle of uh, the bicep bar, like some of these sort of techniques where we're just trying to hyper focus on you know one element of that lift and not go through full range of motion, you could do it enough times where your body is going to uh, sort of prioritize where you're strong and where yes. you're not as strong, and so you you have a governing in, uh, system in your body that limits. Um, the ability of you getting hurt, you know, by applying force where you're not totally. as strong. And so it's, it's really like what you're, what are you teaching your body how to do? Where are you going to be strong um, in terms of uh, that, that specific range of motion? You got to address that specifically uh, with weights and, and get that um, end range strength. I also think that this chasing soreness all the time is just making it worse too. Right, so you're you're oh, already you're just stiff because you're, you're sore. Yeah, you're already training in a shortened range of motion um, on a regular basis, and to the point that you were yeah. making. And then, in addition to that, you're also caught in this trap of always chasing being sore all the time to prove to yourself that you had a good workout. Mm. And so you're walking around stiff and tight, and it feels mm -hmm. like you've lost range of motion because you are are locked up and you've gotten strength in the short range of motion and you don't train in the full range of motion. And so it then people make this connection of, oh, wow, being a bodybuilder or training for strength limits my range of motion up. And it's like, no, that's not the like, bad training does, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And that I mean, that's part of what we're always trying to address on here when you hear us talking about training through full range of motion. It, and if you can't, is yep. to work on that because strength training is one of the best ways to do that. And it's it's the complete opposite of what people think. Look, it's yeah. it's no different than this. Like, um, you know, having trained lots of clients, you'll get the occasional uh, female executive who wears heels every single day for years and years at work. And what you'll find is really tight calf muscles and tight muscles of the foot. Now, is that because what she's doing is shortening the muscle and somehow or she's losing range of motion because the muscle itself is tight or no? What's happened is because she's always with this toe point all the time, in a flex position. she's got really strong in that flex position yep. and that strength now is disproportionate to the other ranges of motion of the foot and the ankle. And so the protection mechanism that, that the body produces is it limits 
the range of motion. Because Look, here's how flexibility works, right? It's controlled by your central nervous system. It's not controlled by the muscle as yeah, if it were like a- Elasticity or something. Yeah, it's not like a rubber band that if you heat it up, it gets more flexible. And if you cool it, you know, make it cold, it gets brittle. That's I remember once it was explained to me that way when I was an early trainer. That's not at all what's happening. I think we all thought that initially. Yeah. yeah, it's not at all what's happening. The central nervous system controls it. It'll tell a muscle, relax, we feel safe, you can stretch, or ooh, we got to be tight. Oftentimes, people will be tight- and it's not the muscles that are tight. It's the CNS saying, limit this range of motion. Anything outside of this range of motion We're weak. is weak yeah. and is unstable. So if you get really strong, if you're, if you're look at a full squat, right? All the way down, all the way up. And you get really strong at a half squatting, like really strong. The, por the, the ratio of your strength from the half squat to full squat now is so broad that when you go do anything and you squat down, your body's going to limit it. Yeah, it's it going to say, oh, outside of that, get tight. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, get tight because we don't want to go down protect any further you, than this. Protect you. I yes. mean, that's really the mechanism that's in place. And yes. It's, it's an important one for your body to have so you don't just tear your muscle right off the bone. Right. But full range of motion resistance training, full range of motion is that's the opposite. It increases the strength all the way through the range of motion, increases stability, and now you have real functional flexibility that can work in the real world. Now, you may be thinking, I can't do full range of motion on some exercises. That's Okay. The goal is to be able to get there though. So your goal is to work towards that point through correctional exercise. You can use programs like MAPS Prime Pro. You can go lighter, correct your form. But the full range of motion training does the opposite of what you see sometimes with meatheads where they're super stiff. Well, this is this also highlights the the young, because how often you hear this too with um, young kids who don't want to do mobility work because they don't have any aches and pains. There are other reasons why yeah. you should be training mobility besides just to prevent chronic pain. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how it's commonly used right now. Like it's not hard convincing a 40 year old plus that listens to the show that they should do yeah. mobility because they're like, yeah, and I, they feel the difference immediately when they do it but if you're young and you train like a bodybuilder or you try to press the weight and build all this muscle and you are not working through full range mm -hmm. of motion this is a reason why you want to incorporate mobility in your training so you don't end up in this situation totally look mm -hmm. you're, you're you get a lot of check engine lights that appear before pain okay so pain is like it's like you have a check engine light on you ignore it and then smoke starts coming out of the engine that's pain by the time you hurt Lots of things have led up to that point. So for someone who's young and listening and saying, well, I feel fine, that doesn't mean you are fine, okay? That just means you haven't got to the point where the pain will start to happen. And by the way, once you start to hurt, you have to backtrack and it takes a while. And it's not just when the pain stops. You still got more room to go before you're, you're doing really great. And I will say this just to, to entice young people even more. Mobility training will make you build more muscle and, and make you stronger anyway because it improves your connection, your range of motion. So forget the pain part. Yeah. You want to maximize your results in the gym. Uh, work on mobility. Work on mobility now. Work on mobility always. It'll do that. Next question is from Rolando Chavez 2. Are massage guns a helpful tool for recovery? Wow. You know, there's mixed messages. We talked about this in a while. With massage. So some studies will show it doesn't facilitate recovery. Other studies will show... It does help facilitate recover. I'm in the camp that it does. Now, we'll get to massage guns in a second, but I'm talking about massage first in general, like a good massage practitioner, because that's the gold standard, right? You have someone who really knows what they're doing, work on your body. Here's why I think massage improves uh, or, or helps facilitate recovery. Um, now, there's the argument. It moves fluid through the body. It helps with the inflammation. It helps get the signaling uh, to happen and re recovery work faster. I, maybe that might be happening, but here's the, the main reason why I think it helps facilitate recovery. A good massage, what massage does when you press on a muscle is it sends a signal to the central nervous system and it says, chill relax. Out. Yeah, chill out. So like if you have a knot, you ever had someone push on a knot in your shoulder or your back and then you feel it release, that pressure told the central nervous system, this doesn't need to be so tight. Yeah. You know, you get, you get this kind of feedback mechanism. The CNS relaxes. Yeah. It interrupts that feedback mechanism. Yes, which I think that is important. helps with recovery. Because if your muscles are are constantly kind of tight, yeah. that's going to prevent recovery because it's 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 a little bit damaging, especially over time when you have this tight, you know, I've gotten sore just from being tight in an area for too long. So I think massage helps you move better and helps release uh, the CNS a little bit, which yeah. then allows the recovery to happen a little faster. I think yeah, it needs that, that break 
from that that constant loop. It's it it's almost like once you get in that loop and anything you do that's not even a movement that should affect that area, yeah. like your body is just gonna tense up a bit more, a bit more over and over and yes. over, and you just get in this perpetual loop that if you need to like physically address it, and I think that it's really helpful to get um, that that outside stimulus to uh, break that up and then allow, you know, more range of motion, even if it's temporary, which, you know, we found is, you know, the, the effect doesn't last very long, but now mm-hmm. you can really work on mobilizing it, getting more circulation. Well, to me, that's the key to me. The, the key is not so much the massage gun or the massage is what you do with it afterwards. It's you get the temporary relief so that you can then go train uh, your mobility work or properly you can then train in full range of motion, right? Like that, that's the, it's like the foam roll, right? It's the same, same type of a concept where, so if I had a yeah, massage, that's yourself know, applied. Yeah. I don't have one, but I would totally use one. I mean, I think, I think that it'd be a cool tool to have. I don't really, it's not that big of a deal for me to carry it around. I also think that you can do that with a foam roll. I can do my wife is a massage therapist, so she can do it with her hands. And so I think if I get like really locked up hips from like overreaching on squatting, maybe a couple of days ago, and then I'm back, Back to you know maybe I'm lunging or deadlifting today and I'm still stiff and locked up from that like something that would release all that is a good massage before I go in and then do some great mobility work and then go into my deadlifting yeah. session I mean that's how I would use something like that and I think it's a useful tool um, I don't I think the way it's promoted and it's sold and the way a lot of people think of it is this idea of like you know the pro athletes use it speeds recovery up and like if I want to get the maximum gains and results I'm going to use these tools so I can get faster recovery and mm-hmm. I can go in it's to me it's not like that i don't i don't see and if and even if it is giving you like that you're talking about splitting hair yeah. difference as the, far as the, the competitive edge it's going to the give magic you. is in how it's used just like you said adam if if a muscle is tight and it's preventing me from moving in a way that's going to help do a correctional exercise or moving in a way that's going to give me better technique or form then loosening that muscle up through massage is a phenomenal tool in that sense yeah. but if i just loosen the muscle up and then leave it alone What's going to happen is whatever caused it to be tight is still there. Yeah. So it's going to tighten up again. This is why people go to the same massage therapist every single week for the same areas. Oh, it's yeah. always my neck. It's always my neck. Like you never fix it's it. It's good for business. But yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell <laughs> you what. You. I had When I had my wellness studio, some of the best results I had with clients were when I had a client work with me as a trainer uh, with our hormone and nutrition specialist, that's obvious, and a massage therapist. We had this excellent massage therapist. And what would happen is I would do my assessment and I'd say things like, oh, forward shoulder, anterior pelvic tilt. Um, I would do my correctional exercise. Then the next time they came around, they would see the massage therapist first. Then they'd come see me and I could like right away get into certain movements and the results were were uh, super fast. Now, here's my thing with mas- massage guns. Massage therapists, and you talk to anybody who's really good at massage therapy, there's a, there's a lot of art and science into what they do. Mm-hmm. It's not just you know, rubbing you down and massaging you. A really good massage therapist knows the body in their context, as well as a really good trainer knows the body in the context of exercise. The problem with massage guns is you give them to everyday regular people. They don't understand so much. And all they, they do is they go just, right to that one pain spot. Yeah. And they're just, they're not helping themselves because they're just hammering areas that hurt and they get that temporary kind of relief. Um, so you got to kind of know. So if you combine it with correctional exercise, you know what muscles to get out of the way with massage unbelievable. If you, you don't, don't know, then it's, it's kind of like a waste. You of know, time. you just brought something that's a good point too. I mean, this is something Katrina has talked to me about many times before too, is you can overdo these things too. Totally. Mm-hmm. So the, it's not like more is better no. either. Like there's a, there's a sweet spot of that is the idea is to get the, to get you to relax the, the, the muscle to calm down for a second. So I can then go put the work in. But if you just are getting or digging in or you're just right, you could actually get sore from that. And it completely defeats the whole purpose of why you just did that. You just did it to get some temporary relief Mm -hmm. so you could go put some more work in or work on mobility or go train. And if you actually do it so deep and so hard that it still hinders the workout, it kind of defeats the purpose of why you're using. Absolutely. Now, here's the other thing is that uh, they are all massage tools are a poor substitute for human touch. There's so much value that comes from human touch that nobody ever talks about in the health and fitness space. Well, maybe not a lot of people. Some people do, but it's not very popular. So many healing properties, so many recovery. Like I remember I would get clients that would come in, they'd work with me and they were super, usually older clients like, oh no, I don't want a massage. I don't want anybody touching me. You get this. And then I'd convince them and the the benefits they'd get just from having a person touch them Mm -hmm. and, you know, push on tender areas and whatever. It was like, 
it was uh, almost miraculous in some ways. So the, the the value that you get from good massage from a person is who knows what they're doing is, uh, I mean, they're as valuable as a good trainer in, in my experience. That, that's the only reason yeah. why I think I don't have one of these guns is be, be simply because Your I, wife. yeah, I think she's incredible at that. And to me, it's just like, if I really locked up or a situation like that, she'll, she'll do that, you know? So it doesn't make, and that's the best, I think, in my, in my opinion, yeah, that you can't get if it. you've got that, if you've got somebody who n understands the body, like we do as trainers, I mean, it's amazing. She, I don't even need to tell her what I did. Like as soon as she, oh, she'll see it. Yeah. She'll, oh, yeah. as soon as she starts moving, moving her hands on me instantly she goes right to where i'm at like so i think that that beats a, a yeah a good, any day. A good therapist can really like read your entire body and yeah. your body language and how you react to you know pressure and it's really interesting to me like and that, they have lots of terms you know to define all that but i'm just like whatever this feels amazing well yeah. you remember when we we went through uh the aldoa stuff like the fascia yeah. lines and stuff like that yes what always fascinated for me and you know she doesn't have an aldoa certification and and like her their schooling is a little bit different what they go through but i remember when we for and i understand the body and anatomy mm -hmm. really well as you guys do uh, it would trip me out. Sometimes she would, you know, she would do something like in my calf right. and it would release something in like my upper back yeah. or something yeah. it would trip me out. You know, like I knew I had some issue up here, but then all of a sudden she would push it's a totally different art. You understand it, it, that collateral effect. Right? Yeah. yeah. So like, if you, if you understand those fascia lines and how, how totally. long they run, you can go work your way totally. down another part of the body to give relief in a completely, uh, like you ain't uh, the average person who owns a their gun isn't, isn't able to do that. Here's what, you know? here's what it makes me think of. It's like having a dumbbell like a dumbbell can be a very valuable tool you just gotta know how to use it so i would like to see massage guns come with programs that help you assess and then apply and use rather than the indiscriminate use of a massage gun i have it and i just push on things that hurt because i don't see i don't think there's tons of value in that i think you're just you're kind of shooting in the dark and poking what hurts and that doesn't necessarily help you if you're not doing it the right way Next question is from April Young Fitness. Can eating fat in your post-workout meal slow down digestion and inhibit absorption of nutrients? Uh, the slow down, yes. Inhibit, no. Yeah, not even close. Fat increases absorption. There's yeah. fat-soluble vitamins and nutrients that right. need fat for uh, to, to in order to get absorbed and utilized by your tissue. <laughs> Imagine if that was a strategy. Just eat higher fat and you get absorbed less. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? That's so what? You know, it's funny. They did. Uh, remember this? Remember? Okay, so obviously when, when we were younger, it was all about low fat. Everything was low fat, low fat yeah. to the point where uh, uh, skim milk, fat-free milk, was the name of the game. Right? Nobody drank whole milk. They found that in, of course, skim milk also was high in calcium. All milk is high in calcium. They found that kids who drank lots of skim milk. Even though they fortified it, fortified it with vitamin D. Well, it's all and it's, lactose at that point. And, well, community. it's just it's just protein and lactose, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's like so sugar and it had protein. Calcium fortified with vitamin D, weaker bones, low calcium because yeah. it weren't absorbing it because there was no fat in the milk. So right. no fat increases absorption. Now this whole thing about digestion. Okay, let me tell you about the supplement industry and how yeah. they have distorted kind of what's important. So the whole messaging behind protein shakes, a brilliant marketing strategy was to say that uh, one of the one of the ways that it helps you recover faster and build muscle faster is take advantage of what's known as this post anabolic window and you want to get as many nutrients absorbed as quickly as possible in that post anabolic window and the studies will show that you'll replenish glycogen and amino acids faster with certain types of carbohydrates like waxy maize was one or you know dextrose even people would use or fast digesting proteins like whey protein isolate. And it is true. You'll get glycogen in your muscles faster and it'll it'll happen quicker with you know a low fat, high protein, high carbohydrate, especially if it's a pre-digested shake of some sort. So what? Yeah. It absorbs just fine if it goes slower too. There's no advantage to it getting absorbed faster unless you plan on doing another workout in one hour. So if I do a workout or I do play a game and I got another game in an hour, yeah, I'm going to want those carbs and, and amino acids in my system right. right away. If I'm working out once today, I could even fast all day long, yeah. eat at night. So long as the calories are the same in same. the day, it's the same benefit. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. So, And, and they, what they did is they placed so much importance on this <laughs> because it sold their products. And all of a sudden, people were afraid to have fat post-workout. Yeah. Oh, no, can't have fat. It slows down. So what? if it's slow? You know what they used to eat? You know what bodybuilders have always ate after workouts? Steak. Ground mm -hmm. beef, uh, full fat cream, egg yolks, like, you know, and all of a sudden it became this like, no, 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 white rice, 
chicken breast, or even better, give me a shake with some like super quick digesting, you know, give me diarrhea, carbohydrate, uh, to, because this is what's supposed to be bullshit. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's total crap. Doesn't matter um, if you have fat, unless again, you plan on working out right after, in which case then, then you want something that's very uh, quick digesting and absorbing. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. 